Let's see, the third is the most difficult of all the closing techniques, and it's the dreaded delegate vote. The dreaded delegate vote. This is where you're probably going to have to go to this year's conference. You're probably going to have to get a hospitality suite and do some entertaining. And then you're going to come down at some point during the conference and you're going to get up and you, along with the other three or four hotels that are also being considered, you're going to get up and you're going to make a presentation in front of the entire voting delegation. Right? I'm now going to tell you a story about the worst experience I ever had, my worst loss as a salesperson. I was in my office in San Francisco, California when I got a phone call from my good friend, Mr. Don Porter, Executive Director of the National Amateur Softball Association, headquartered in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Don is a close friend of mine. I have booked his convention once before. I know the convention. By the way, it's a 10-day convention at the time it was in January. Anybody need 10 days in January? By the way, this is an awesome convention. They have exhibits, they have Rollins, they have Louisville Slugger, they have Mizuno, they have Under Armour, they have all of the apparel and manufacturers. There's Tommy Lasorda, Stan Musial. There's some, uh, this is for me, a hero worshiper, this is my kind of convention. Plus when they leave, they leave all the stuff with you. You'll, your hotel will have the best dressed softball team. You may not be very good, but you will be gorgeous, right? <laughs> Anyway, Don called me and said, look, we're going to do a closed bid format. A closed bid format is a situation where you're going to get a proposal. You're going to fill out the proposal and you're going to send it in. Every RFP we submit is a closed bid. They're not going to call you back and say, look, we got your proposal. If you go down two bucks, you get... that's not the way a closed bid works. Don says, would you be interested in hosting this National Amateur Softball Association in San Francisco? It's going to be a closed bid format. I said, yes, we would be very interested. I said, Don, let me ask, who else is going to be bidding? He said, Steve, I can't tell you that. Now remember, if you know someone well, you can ask them anything you want. If you don't know them well, it's presumptuous. I said, yeah, yeah, right, Don. Who else is submitting a proposal? He said, well, actually, Steve, we're going to be getting a proposal from Louisville, Kentucky. And I went, Louisville, Kentucky? I've got to be honest, Don. San Francisco is not losing to Louisville. Who else is bidding? He said, well, we're going to get a proposal from Reno, Nevada. I said, Don, you were just in Las Vegas two years ago. He said, I know, we're probably not going back. So I picked up the phone, called the director of sales at the Hilton in Reno, Dickie Maurer, who used to work for Hyatt, so I knew him well. I picked up the phone and said, hey, Dickie, are you going to go to Corpus Christi, Texas, which is where this year's convention is, and it's going to be a delegate vote, and we're going to have to go and wine and dine in suites and get up and speak in front of the entire voting delegation? Dickie goes, yeah, Steve, I'm going to go to Corpus Christi this year, but I know I'm not going to get it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go this year, I'm going to get to meet all the players, I'm going to get to know everybody, and then I'm coming back next year to Baltimore, Maryland, and that's where I'll nail it down. And he did, and he did, and he did. This is what we call an effective long-term strategy. He had enough money in his budget and was able to convince his management that it made sense for him to spend the money to go to Corpus Christi this year so he'd be in a position to land the booking next year in Baltimore, and he did, and he did, and he did. Well, I wasn't worried about Reno, Nevada. So I said, who else is going to be bidding? And he said, well, Steve, we don't have the bid yet, but I know what it's going to be. We're going to be getting a bid from Honolulu, Hawaii. Shoot. I said, which hotel? He goes, Hilton Hawaiian Village. Anybody ever been to the Hilton Hawaiian Village? I'm telling you what, Honolulu may not be my cup of tea, but I'm telling you what, the Hilton Hawaiian Village is a breathtaking hotel. They've got the rainbow tower and the snorkeling pool. They look right at Diamond Head. They've got the outriggers that you can rent. They've got like four different restaurants. It is a splendid, splendid hotel. I said, how much? He goes, 179 bucks. Okay, that's all I need. 179 bucks, Hilton Hawaiian Village. So I know what I need to build my presentation around. So I pick up the phone and call Dr. Earl Carmichael, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism, who's also a voting member of the National Amateur Softball Association, also a voting member of the International Olympic Committee, and one of the founders of World Games. Now, Earl and I are old dear friends. I pick up the phone and said, Earl, you want to go get this convention? He's from Waco, Texas, played football at Baylor. He said, and every time the Dallas Cowboys come to San Francisco, Earl and his lovely wife, Evelyn, would go with me. I said, Earl, you want to go get this convention? He goes, saddle up, partner, we'll go get it. But I did not stop there. <laughs> then I picked up the phone and called John Pletch, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism for Santa Clara County. He said, John, you want to go get this piece of business with me? Yeah, and then I did not stop there. I picked up the phone and called Barry Phillips, Director of Sports Sports Marketing with the San Francisco Convention and Business Bureau. Barry, you ever been to Corpus Christi, Texas? Because you're going now. I paid for four airfares. I paid, that's, ah, I want this piece of business. I'm going to bring everybody. Talk about who would you bring. 
I brought three Parks and Rec commissioners, one voting member of the International Olympic Committee, and our director of sports marketing. And here's the way a delegate vote works. We're up in the suite each night, you know. Okay, what did you just do? Well, I just traded Bemidji, Minnesota for the women's double-A slow pitch tournament, and they're going to vote for us for the convention. Good. What did you just do? Well, I just traded Midland, Odessa, Texas. I traded for the men's B fast pitch tournament, and they're going to vote for us. Is it great? What did you just do? Well, I just traded Ulster, New York, and they're going to vote for us. I just gave them our votes for the men's single-A slow pitch tournament, and they're going to vote for the convention. And after the third night, three nights, bam, we got it. No, 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 no. We got enough votes to put us over the top. Because by my calculations, we have 1,001 votes. Because tomorrow, I got to get up and make a presentation to the delegation, which is 2,000 people. And I got 101 votes in the pocket. This is like taking candy from a baby. Now, I don't mind telling you I was a scotch nervous. So I went to Mr. Don Porter, my good friend. I said, Don, do you mind if I go first tomorrow when I have to speak in front of 2,000 drunken hungover softball players? He goes, no, Steve, that's fine. So I got up seven minutes. That's all you get. That's where this came from, seven minutes. So I got up, made my presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, San Francisco, everybody's favorite city. I had people in the audience with little plastic softball, San Francisco, everybody's favorite city. And the count of three, they threw them. There were like 50 softballs being thrown. And, you know, they were like a beach ball at a Dodger game. They were bouncing around. Everyone cheering and hooping. Man, when I got off that stage, it was a done deal. Next went Louisville, Kentucky. Actually, I thought the woman from Kentucky did the best job. She was actually dressed in the Churchill Downs riding habit. She had the riding breeches and the nice crushed velvet hat. She had the Kentucky Derby horn. And she actually got up and played it. She went, I thought, wow, that is really cool. But the truth is, I didn't think anybody wanted to go to Louisville. I still wasn't very worried. Next went Reno, Nevada, Dickie Maurer. He didn't have any suite. He didn't need to. He wasn't trying to get it. He just got out his speech. He got seven minutes. He took like 30 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed meeting each and every one of you. You guys are wonderful. Thanks very much. I'll see you in Baltimore next year. He did, and he did. Next went Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, I hadn't even met the delegate yet. I didn't even know that someone from Hawaii was. They certainly didn't have any suite. They didn't have any California white wine. They didn't have any San Francisco sourdough bread. They didn't have any of that. And so the guy gets up there, and I'll never forget him. His name was Leroy Sims, and he was the director of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. And he gets up there in this really soft, by the way, he had an incredibly ugly Hawaiian print shirt on. I'm a big Hawaiian print shirt fan. This one was not particularly attractive, but I'm not bitter. <laughs> so Leroy gets up there with his, you know, he was a short guy, just his head barely popped over the podium with his little <laughs> beady eyes. <laughs> and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, I've just talked to one of the hotels back in Waikiki, and I've been able to get us another hotel for $89. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. The bid is $179 at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. What's the, what, what do you mean $89? And just like this, for the first time that morning, the room became silent. And all of a sudden, two people in the back, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32, then 60 then 100, then 200, then 400, then 700. And all of a sudden, there were 1,000 drunken, hungover softball players, Metro commissioners, and umpires yelling simultaneously, we're going to Hawaii! I'm going, whoa, 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 wait, wait, look, Don, that was a closed bid format. He changed his bid, and Don goes, Steve, look, there's guys up surfing on the tables. <laughs> well, I love this secret, secret ballot. They all line up one at a time, and they hand their vote to Don Porter who then, in front of everybody, reads it. San Francisco. Then there's a big LCD back behind here, and a vote goes up for San Francisco. I can see how you're voting. Final vote. Louisville, Kentucky. One. Well, they voted for themselves. Wow. Reno, Nevada. One. San Francisco, California. Two. Excuse me, I paid for four airfares. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't vote for San Francisco? Well, you know my wife, she you know why. No, man. I paid your airfare. You got to vote for me. Honolulu, Hawaii, 1,996 votes. Delegate vote, 
is the category, what did I do wrong? This is the rule of the delegate vote. It's why we take the time to talk about it. What did I do wrong? I went first. And in the delegate vote, what do you always, always, always do, no matter how nervous you are? You go last. You insist on going last. You even fake stomach cramps if that's what you got to do. You got a fake headache. You got to fake whatever you got to do. You got to go last. Because if I'd gone last, I would have destroyed Leroy Sims. I know exactly what I would have said. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for this time. Before San Francisco proceeds with this presentation, I think it's incumbent upon the Board of Directors to verify the information that Mr. Sims has introduced. Something seems to be very strange here. <laughs> By the way, what kind of hotel would you want to stay in for 89 bucks? And no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I consider it the worst defeat of my professional career. I got smoked. Well, this story gets worse. A couple weeks later, I was sitting at my desk in San Francisco, California. I got a phone call from Don Porter, executive director of the National Amateur Softball Association. He said, Steve, you still got that space? I said, geez, Don, no, I sold into that before I hit the plane to come home. Why? He goes, well, it turns out our friend, Mr. Sims, really didn't have an authorized bid. There really was no hotel for $89. Oh. I said, well, what about the Hilton Hawaiian Village? He goes, no, they have released all the space. We cannot get space in Hawaii. Guess who got it? <laughs> Louisville, Kentucky. Uh -huh. To the meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah, go last, go last.